Deficient Master, welcome. Deck save Dan! <laughs> How are we doing today? How are you doing? It's an early morning for me. I said, I know you're out, way out in the future in the in wherever yep. you are. And uh, so I still got my coffee, just working on that here. But uh, how are you doing, man? I'm very well, thank you. It's, it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon already. I won't tell you too much because I don't want to upset the space-time continuum. So uh, I won't let you know what's happened in the future, okay? Um, so welcome Perfect. to your dicey discussion. How are you feeling about the interview today? Interview's good. Coffee yep. tastes a little funny, but other than that, I'm ready to rock, man. Let's do this. Excellent. So, the format is 100 questions. I'll ask you to roll a D100. 50 of the questions will be TTRPG, D&D, the hobby related. 50 of them will be random. Mm. So you might not get a question about the hobby at all. Interesting. Okay. Let's do it. So deficient. We'll have 30 minutes on the clock. We like to do things quick on the channel. So we'll start the timer now. Let's have your first roll, deficient. <laughs> All right, let me see what I got here. I grabbed a little dice box here just for this occasion. So Excellent. I got a suck ears. What's that? I suck it. <laughs> I think you've Honey. got the wrong dice. Honey, I said the D100. Here, hold on a second. Let's try that again. 81. 81. 81. 81. And, and, okay. and I don't fu I don't fudge here because you can see it right here on screen. That's the most important thing. I don't take any fudges on this channel. Okay. I have a couple. Yeah, I have a couple opinions on it. Just, but I'll save that for another video. So number eighty-one. Describe your feelings when a D and D session gets cancelled. So for me, I run a game for a very tight knit tight knit group of people and uh, friends and a couple of my brothers. And for I also have a few outliers of players that will come in and out. For me, it will depend on who's canceling too. Cause oftentimes too, it's like if one guy cancels, then it's a high probability of the other guy canceling and it just dominoes. So like if I have my, my buddy, John, for instance, he'll love to cancel at, you know, last second. Hey, look, it's a game. It's just, you know, it's just us girls here. Yep. So, you know, I'm, it's at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. But I get, um, for me too, I also, how I run my games is very, um, I'm very sandboxy. Um, very much a prep a lot of things at the beginning and leave a lot of wiggle room at the tail end of things. And then yep, once I, I feel, feel like that. it's getting a little too loosey-goosey, that's when I say, okay, what's our big decision for next week or for next yep. game? And then that's when, how I prep everything else. So, you know, that just gives me more time to kind of tinker around with the opening shot. Um, I talk about that a lot. Like I call it my uh, the unofficial law of narrative influence where I said we have the most, we DMs have the most power at the beginning of the session. And then that kind of power <laughs> kind of fizzles out. Yeah, it fades away, doesn't play. it? Yeah, it goes on to the other four or five people mm -hmm. around the but, table. But, you know, I said we're all adults here too. I'm, you know, my, my friends and I, we've got careers, we've got spouses uh, yeah. we've got other lives. And so like, I get it. And but I'm just trying to find more people, Dan, that are as <laughs> abs obsessed as I it's, am about it, this. Hobby. Yeah. That's the key. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get them in. Do you have, uh, do you have anyone secretly now? I'm not naming any names because I wouldn't okay. promote that at all. Um, but is there anyone secretly in your, uh, in your group that you're like, yes, they they're go when they, when they're gone. Yeah. Um, I've had, I've had a couple, nobody currently. <laughs> But I've had a couple of people, namely yeah. uh, Larry. Larry was the worst because Larry, uh, he would read the adventure. I found out towards the tail end, he would read the adventure module at the, you know, before the game. Back when I was running Tomb of Annihilation. And so oh. I'm a little bit bitter, Larry. Just a little bit bitter. But, you know. You know, it's, we've okay. All, we've it's okay not to let it go. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Should we get another roll going, to fishing? Yes. Let's do my, it. my goal is to beat Hanker and Fernales. Fair. Uh, number I questions. mean, you know, absolutely. I have a six. A six? Oh, my word. Low. What's that on, what's that on the bingo uh, scale? Uh, I was just about to say, so are you you're familiar with bingo calls? Not at all. Not, until, not no. until I saw your last video with Hank. <laughs> well, some of these are. Um, are very good. Some of them are not so good. So uh, number number six is half a dozen. Okay, well that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? So what's the most relieving thing in the world? The most relieving thing in your opinion? <sighs> the most relieving thing. I yeah. will say. <laughs> hmm. Such, such, such 
Yeah. We are in a safe space, so it can oh, be Oh, yeah, 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 just the internet. I get that, I get that. <laughs> the most relieving thing would be, for me, is when I am, go, so I work in the medical field. Okay? Yeah. I am, a, I am a nurse by day, and uh, my, for me, my biggest, and I'm at this point now with how, how well YouTube has gone so far for me just now, yeah. for now, um, where if I get a call that I'm like on call or canceled just for, you know, even for a couple of hours, it's just so relieving to be like, yes, I can actually like now I can actually finish this script or finish this edit. <laughs> for me, that's the most relieving thing of like yeah. having a little bit less of the real job uh, to be able to do, you know, the fake fun job. Yeah. You, so, yeah. What you actually want to do. The, Is that what you're yes, saying? That's what I actually want to do. Yes. So. <laughs> oh, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. I'm completely on board with that. I work in recruitment, so oh, okay. I get to do this. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, I get you. Yeah, I, and I said, and I work with recruiters too. In my on yeah. my end of the job. Yeah, yeah, we're so not we're, we're not nice people. Uh, so right, <laughs> let's let's, uh, let's get another roll in. Let's, let's do, do it. it. We've got forty eight. Forty eight. Right. Let's uh, let's get the bingo calls on. Uh, four dozen. 48. <laughs> okay. I mean, hitting those dozens. Okay. It is technically so, correct. Yeah, absolutely. So, if you could turn invisible, what would you get up to? If I could turn invisible, probably in nothing, nothing legal. Um, yeah. But for me, it would be. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could do the totally deficient master answer, but that just sounded a little weird. Of like, I'd sneak in other D and D YouTubers and like figure out like I would. Oh, here's what I would do. Here's what I would do. That wouldn't. It would be weird, but it won't be. It won't be inappropriate. Weird is I would sneak into other D and D tubers like where they film, and yep. then I would shoot. I would shoot. I would shoot. Fi I would shoot a roll for <laughs> for a video myself. <laughs> so I would be like in Matthew Colville's uh, in Little his office dungeon so be like, thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I would like I would do the opening shot, and then I just I wouldn't say anything in the video, and I would just move. You know, said, but that's what I would do. Just go invisible, sneak in. I said, do my you know put on my photo photo ring, my ring yeah. of visibility. Which by the way, I said. I've got one right now in my last. Uh, you could see it in my last video. It's kind of finicky. It's sometimes it's just it's only the ring goes invisible. But yeah. you know, that's what I got for haggling with a wiz uh, funny looking wizard. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Let's get another roll. Let's keep right. going. Twenty six. Twenty six. So twenty six. The bingo call is pick and mix. Are you familiar with pick and mix in the US? Not at all. It sounds like, is it like Chex Mix? Or it's like a bunch of <laughs> variety it's, snacks mixed in a it bag? Is. So basically what you would do in Britain is you get a paper bag and there are sweets, like little okay. little sugary sweets, little bits of licorice and things like that. And you just scoop them into the bag. Oh, okay. That's a yeah. lot of fun. A big, big thing over here. Not so much anymore. Um, <laughs> not very hygienic. No, no, no. I said there's, no, there's no. a lot of things I didn't realize we were very unhygienic about until the last couple yeah. of years. But gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we live, we learn, don't we? Hey. Um, so, number 26. Will robots take over the world? Uh, AI will. Um, the key, they will take over the internet. And then the internet will be boring. And then we will come up with a second internet uh, called probably the Internet 2, Electric Boogaloo. And then everybody will try to, mi whoever, the most successful people will be the ones who migrate to Internet 2 the earliest, whether that's, but the question is though, who's going to own or build Internet 2, be that Musk or Bezos? At that point, I feel like we're just going to be repeating history where then more AI will take over Internet 2. Then, we'll be, then we will start a Internet 3. And hopefully by then I'll be able to jump on the trend of getting on Internet 3, just yep. like with D&D &D where I'm 10 years late to the YouTube party. So... That's kind of you my theory. <laughs> <laughs> that is my theory. You know, gosh, if I only did this like five years earlier. I, I but, know. Oh, hey, well, you know. Better we'll, late than we'll, never. Absolutely. We'll jump on it together when it happens. That's right. Hand in hand. Said, you and me, Dan. I said, we'll, we'll, we'll plow through and we'll, we'll make That's it. it. Uh, we're going to rise to the top together, my friend. <laughs> right. Let's get another roll. Maybe it. it'll be hobby related this time. Who knows? <laughs> 80. 80 even. 80 even. One fat, if, lady. one fat lady. One, one fat lady. <laughs> 80 even. So, what song do you want played at your funeral? Cheering. Uh, gosh, 
my what's funny is that my wife has like the whole funeral planned out and it's kind of it stinks because she wants a very specific choir that's very expensive <laughs> she wants very specific songs that wow, go in my okay. ear and out the other so yeah. i've never thought about this myself because i'm going to live forever but um my f- funeral song you know, I think if if YouTube, if I don't, if I keep doing this YouTube thing until I get go to the grave, it would have to be probably like a Kevin McLeod song that I one of the many Kevin McLeod songs I use, and I only use it because it's royalty free. <laughs> so then, in that way, then I could stream slash I could have somebody. I'll hopefully maybe I'll hire Tui or somebody to uh, film yeah. my funeral and then upload it to my channel when I die. And then it'll, you know, it'll expl- I'll get expl- you know, the views will explode. But then I'll be able to use the music you know, straight up. And I won't get copyright claimed. So, it, well, hopefully, if it, you know, if it does that well, it'll pay for your wife's funeral. So there we go. Expensive. There you go. <laughs> that's my master plan. Yeah, that's said Kevin Everyone's McLeod. Everyone's a like, winner. <laughs> <laughs> and probably el- the elevator music that he, you know, that everybody likes to use on YouTube. Okay, that would yeah, be the yeah, specific sure. one. That's, yeah, yeah. And that I, I know exactly the one you're talking about. So. <laughs> play it now. Play the clip. Play the music now, Tui. <laughs> right, let's get another roll. Uh, I like making editors work as somebody who edits videos. <laughs> 65, 65. 65. 65. Um, so 65 for the bingo call is old age pension. Mm, oh, uh, okay. Because well, now, I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know how it is over on that side of the world, but for us, it's looking more like 67. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, I, don't think it's <laughs> good. I, th- I think it's going to be 69 for my time, if I'm <laughs> yeah, going to be completely honest exactly. with you. Maybe in the 70s. Uh, I mean, wh- why else are we doing YouTube? I mean, yeah, we've why? Yeah, absolutely. We've kind, of, yeah. we've kind of seen the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel and it's a, it's a <laughs> rolling train into, you know, long retirement. Get that side hustle going. That's right. Right. So what's the most drunk you've been during a D&D session and did it end badly? Oh, gosh. See, my parents are going to watch this. And that's the thing is my parents watch my videos. I have tried for the longest of time to keep my parent my parents not watching because they work they don't play D at all they know we love it yeah. my brothers and i um we actually okay i'm gonna totally diverge this uh into a story because i feel like this story this is more of a applicable story for um because i also i don't drink a, i don't drink a lot at all in fact the, mm-hmm. i have not been i've not drank at a D game so that's my that's my short answer but diverting right. is that um is uh I, I, why I'm so like, oh, I, I don't want my parents to see this. Um, my parents, we hid D and D for, uh, for about at least a year when we first started playing. Cause we grew up in a very, uh, traditional Christian home, okay. uh, with a lot of very traditional, uh, older, uh, traditional values, you know, whatever, you know, if the pastor says that, you know, tabletop role playing games are evil because he saw, you know, the documentaries or the videos or whatever everybody else was saying, you know, around the 80s, the 70s Tom Hanks and 80s. movie, all of that. Yes. So <laughs> that that kind of ha- that was that was that's what steered them. Luckily, when they did eventually find out, we kind of talked them through cuz I, I was we were into Star Wars, we were into Lord of the Rings, we were into yeah. fantasy. It was just hey, yeah, it's yeah. just fantasy rule set. And uh, but we hit it for the longest time because we played Pathfinder at first, Pathfinder first edition. And so that was my like scapegoat was like, oh, we're not playing Dungeons and Dragons. We're (laughs) the bad one, the evil one with demons and stuff. We're playing Pathfinder where you get to kill demons and stuff. (laughs) <laughs> so that was my our whole like like circuit like said that was us like trying to circumvent the rules at the time, but you know we eventually got caught. But luckily, I said we talked it, we hashed it out, talked it yeah. out like adults, and it ended up working out at the end. But yes, yeah, so I have not been. So I also said I have not been drunk at a D and D game, and uh, sorry, mom and dad. But uh, uh, yeah, I said I've, I I play as sharp as I can because if I start going down, the whole game starts going down. <laughs> so I have to I have to stay sharp. Like you've got to be on the can, ball. Yeah, I gotta be yeah. on the ball. Gotta yeah, be on the yeah. ball. I know. Um, you know. I I think I think we'll see we we would see eye to eye on a lot of things when it comes to you know running a game and so on. I mean, but, um, and it depends. It depends on the context too. It's like, are we kind of like a, is this a beer and pretzels kind of game or are yeah. we going to be like more like, are we getting really ingrained into our characters and trying to, you a, know, accomplish yeah. this goal? Absolutely. Is this, yeah. You know, so I get, I said, and I try to run, I run serious 
But yeah. my players and I let my players bring the humor and the, you know, the cheesiness into it. I just run it seriously. And I think that's honestly makes it more funny when I'm not trying to be funny. Uh, yeah, I'm drunk at every game. <laughs> just, uh, just so we know. Uh, cool. Let's uh, let's get another roll in, division. Let's do it. Uh, Forty-six. Forty-six. Haven't had any repeats from the last interview, which is interesting. I, yeah, I said, but I'm curious yeah. to see if, if we get any and what your plan is. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, up to tricks. Forty-six. Okay. What's your earliest memory? Um, three years old. I was standing next to my mother in the hospital in her hot while she was in the hospital bed having my brother. Uh, I have two younger brothers. One is three years younger than me. The other one is 10 years younger than me. It was my mother's last attempt at a girl. She failed. So um, but my brother, uh, my my the middle child of our of us three. Um, I remember him being born. I remember my I think it was right after he was born and my mom, I remember looking over. And uh, she's like, you want to, you know, I was three years old. She's like, you want to jump in the, you know, you want to lay next to me here? And I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, no way. <laughs> no. Um, funny thing, too, is and then I end up working in the medical field around all that stuff later. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's my earliest memory. It's a strong memory. I, I, I couldn't even tell you mine. Uh, right, let's have another roll. <laughs> let's do 30, 30 even. 30 even. Uh, dirty Gertie, thirty <laughs> is okay. the thing. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, what's your favourite word? What's the word you my, like saying the most? Uh, my favourite word. I'm going to turn this into a D and D esque question. Yeah. My favourite word is agency. Player oh. agency. You say it so uh, well as well. <laughs> Thank you. I am a big component of it because, and I I will preach this on my channel until I eventually burn out. Or, you know, start covering, like, r slash D&D horror stories. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, I, agency to me is what makes these games unique. It's, you know, I can I can tell a good, we can tell good stories in books. We can have, like, epic visual, visuals and really nitty-gritty combats in video games. But we can't have as complete control of a character in a fictional world as we can in these games. And so my thing as a DM is I want to push, I want to try to, use D and D strength as I want to put that on the top of my podium versus trying to make D and D more like a video game, trying to make D and D more like a choose your own adventure book, trying to make D and D more like a, you know, like a novel. Um, and I might, that's my whole goal kind of in my channel is to kind of tell D newer DMS. It's like, this is what's worked for me is when I started focusing on player agency, my games got better, both they were more enjoyable for me to run and they're more enjoyable for my players to participate in. Um, and so I just try to tell that like, that's work for me. I'm hoping it works for you. If you go through all my videos, almost every video, I say that like, this is what worked for me. Maybe this will work for you. But in my comment section, some people will be like, well, why don't you do that? But so that's a whole nother discussion, but yes, that's, that's my big thing. Player agency. That's the one. Yes. I, yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree more. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Um, and then I tell them to shut up. <laughs> no, that's enough agency for you. <laughs> yeah. Cool, let's get another roll in. Let's do it. Nah, 19. 19. 19. Uh, goodbye, teens. 19. Yeah. Oh, very good. Gosh, um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be turning 30 this year, and I, I, I'm I, now ready to, like, <laughs> I'm ready to go full in on first edition at this point. You, now yep. I feel like I'm turning into a grognard the longer I go. That's my dice, I my dice numbers are getting bigger. My, you know, my I need more bigger dice to see better. They're the less yeah. fancy. <laughs> I, I recently Just, bought a, a set of Hankrin, not of Hankrin Furnails, unofficial Ch Chessex yellow, the Chessex so yellow ones, see, yeah. yeah, so I can see better, see them better. So <laughs> I am, yeah. So I'm, yeah. I, I'm, oh. I'm a little sad. It's over. It's, it's all right. I've got ten years on you. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, it's okay. Uh, so, what is your pre-session routine? So, what do you do before a okay. session? Are we talking, what do you think, are you talking like hours or day, or like the day of? Oh, I, I, I want to say the day of. Okay, day so of. You, you, your prep's in, Yeah. But you're just G'ing yourself up or, you okay. know, whatever it may be. Big thing is, um, I make sure I write out my, like, I do an opening monologue. So, like, I know, like, a lot, of, or an opening, like, almost like a box text. I hate box yeah. text personally, but I do yeah. like, okay, what is the first thing I'm saying when the game starts? 
Because once again, I'm a big guy. I'm a big proponent of prepping or uh, prepping everything at the beginning and then letting it go, you know, letting mm-hmm. it up to the players uh, towards the tail end. And uh, I always said, I need a strong hook. I need that strong opener. So what am I saying? What is the scenario? Um, sometimes uh, right now I'm playing um, not at my home. I'm playing at somebody else's home who's uh, a friend of mine's. And so usually I don't have to like set up anything myself, more so like plugging things in and getting the laptop fired up and getting the notes all lined up. But um, yeah, big thing is making sure that like that first, that opening like five minutes is, you know, how solid is that? Is there anything I need to tweak? Is there anything, you know, is there any holes or gaps I need to fill in right there? Because that's where I have the most power as a DM. And that's where I feel like I can steer the game into where yeah. I want it to eventually lead. And yeah. then, I said, then, I, then you hand it to your players. And, and then the it's up to well. them. Yeah, just that little, here we are. Off yes. you go. <laughs> That's kind of like, and I do a lot of like, I'll do all the, you know, I'll do all the vo- voice, you know. All the, all voice. You, you yeah. said you were a, you were a theater kid, so I yes, I was a theater that, kid, yeah. so I do I do a lot of theater kid prep too, where like I you know, get all loosey goosey and you know. Do oh, all those, deficient. Like... We're 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 cut from the same cloth. <laughs> I was a drama kid in school as well, so love it. All that me 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 me. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so I'll do that, that too. Absolutely. <laughs> so. We are well over halfway. Ah. Now. We're actually ten minutes left. I would, I was going to call the halfway, but we got talking. So, how are you feeling? Now we're ten minutes left. I, I, I wish, I, I wish I had thirty more, man. I love your format here. I, I said, <laughs> Dex save Dad. You are. I think you're crushing it. I just, you just. I said, you, we just got to give it time, man. Both of us. I mean, I've only been out this for five, about five, six months now at the time of this recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hey, you know, if you are a fan of me people oh. you're a fan of deck save dan you need to <laughs> like comment and subscribe right down here okay? we'll get a whole sharing thing going it'd be great guys come on same Absolutely. for any one of my channel who's not following <laughs> deficient master get on that like subscribe <laughs> comment let's do it i'm curious if i beat hankering's questions i'll have to count next when this goes live yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't keep count. That's no, it's okay. Two it's just, it's just going to have to. I'll, <laughs> I'll just have to rewatch. I said, just have to watch more of your video over and over again. And Absolutely. Yeah, sure just get, on repeat. Yeah. Get the count right. <laughs> <laughs> let's get another roll in. Deficient, let's do it. 50, 50 even. 50 even? Oh. Right down the middle. Right down the middle. Half a century. Not a very good one. Uh, how long do you how long do you think you would survive alone in the wild? Um, my my pride would tell me, oh, I go at least a couple of days. But um, I do do I do have some hiking. I do have some hiking experience, but like hiking on trails experience. Yeah. Um, we went to in fact. I'm gonna go grab it right this second. Right <laughs> my wife just got me this. Like a national park check off oh, wow. for American national parks. Oh, that's great! And you get stickers that put it on. So we've yeah, been yeah, to yeah. quite a few. I think we've been to about seventeen right now. Um, so I've done a lot of like outdoor stuff. I'm not big, but I'm not a big like camper slash. I don't know how to make a fire. I don't know how to. You know, I would probably YouTube it. So if the question, if I'm out in the wilderness, <laughs> if I don't have internet service. I'll give myself 24 hours. If I have internet service, maybe I can, you know, I get obsessive enough over things and learning on YouTube, just yeah. like this channel, where yeah. um, I might be able to, like, quickly learn how to make a, fi- make a fire, you know, find, you know, hunt, forage. But, uh, yeah, it probably won't be very long at all. Probably uh, two days tops uh, under the best circumstances because um, – if I'm you've got whip. water source and you manage <laughs> yeah. to get a fire going, yeah, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm the same. I'll be like, nah, I've had enough yeah. now. Go exactly. to sleep, never wake up. Um, okay, let's get another roll in. <laughs> uh, 35. 35. Jump and jive. What was your, oh, I've been playing my character wrong moment. Um, I think we ooh. might have all had that moment. Um, for me, it was probably the first time I ever played a fantasy game. Mm-hmm. I play. Oh well, no, actually, no. It's gonna be. The, I'm gonna take it back even further. I'm gonna take my first character ever, which was a Star Wars game we played in Star Wars Saga, uh, which is where I was introduced to the game. Which I was introduced pretty late. Like I was just out of getting just out of high school. Yeah. Um, and we were playing Star Wars Saga because we were big Star Wars fans at the time before the sequel trilogy came out. <laughs> um, but um. The I was playing a Gungan Jedi named Mean Mean Nups, and on the first instance, we were like flying in a ship, like we were in like a freight ship or something, and then a couple of stormtroopers sh- or a couple of them, like bad guys showed up, and we dispatched them, and we had one left, and so I was trying to figure out where is like where is your leader, and I I had my lightsaber off, and I put it up to his 
helmet and I threatened and I threatened him like that. I was like, where is, you know, where is Yusa's leader? And uh, my DM at that time was like, what are you doing? You're a Jedi. And I'm like, that's when I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I you know that's I guess that's morally wrong to be doing at the time. So that's what I kind of learned. Like, oh, yeah, I guess everything, all my choices do have consequences. Yes. Depending on my background. And that's where I said and that's where I was like, whoa, Misa can do anything. And that's kind of where that came from was that that just sense of like, oh, my, it's kind of opened my mind to the matrix. Yeah, yeah. Of like, oh, OK, like everything I do, I could do anything, but anything I do has consequences. Has consequences. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So that's 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 kind of my earliest like, oh, wait, I'm playing my character, I think, a little wrong here. Brilliant. Excellent. Love, <laughs> love that. Right. So we've got five minutes left. All right. I'm going to try to get at least two more in. Fifty one. Fifty one. AI art for your personal use in campaigns, i.e. for character design, NPC design, sweeping vistas. What are your thoughts about that? Personal game? Okay. Anything that if you're going to post it, if you're going to put it on, if you're going to, you know, make a product, especially a paid product. Yeah. Uh, man, look, man. Artists, I, I, my father was an art, a, a struggling artist, and so our... You know, I'm all about supporting artists. I think hopefully one day if I start making products, um, making adventures, making games, I'm going to, you know, I want to be able to pull from all these very talented artists. And, you know, it's just now I think right now, maybe it'll maybe they'll get better over the in the next couple of years. But like now it's still kind of obvious to know if like this is AI or this was taken from AI. And so that's just that whole uncanniness of. of yeah of uh especially if it's in a if it's in a product you've paid for i'm a little iffy if it's like i, I honestly don't care if, if it's like a free product or a pay what you want and you threw in some you know and that's the thing too i you know as somebody who uses a lot of like stock images online for my videos like you pull up stock sites they're all ai now too and it's yeah. hard sometimes it's difficult to tell so it's like you know i try not to i personally try not to use it at all in a from a YouTuber sense, but uh, but as far as like your own personal game, man, just yeah. like stealing, I, I steal everything. I steal ideas, content from everything straight up in my own personal games. Same thing with art. Just use whatever. If you've got something that's going to help make your game a little stronger at your own home table, go for it is my yeah. mentality. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. It's, uh, as long as it doesn't look rubbish. Yeah, that's, exactly. You know, that's it. That's it, isn't it? Cool. Three minutes, 36 right. seconds. 55. Did I, did I feel like did I get this one before? No. Snakes okay. alive. Fifty-five. Pen and pad, or laptop or tablet for taking notes. What's your preference uh, and why? Uh, laptop because my handwriting sucks. Um, <laughs> my I'm left. I am cursed to be left-handed in this world, um, as some people have pointed out in my videos. And so even when I I barely write in like with even in my sharpie handwriting is terrible um so i tend to <laughs> i tend to favor laptop when i'm like need to quickly take notes when i write yeah. scripts or anything sometimes i'll pull out a pen and pad and like sometimes it's easier to draw out like a, a general map of things um i used to i'll still use like battle maps in game mm -hmm. but laptop for notes 100 percent, just because of my terrible rubbish just handwriting, handwriting. Yeah. absolutely <sighs> I, can't, I can't get on with the laptop maybe that's our 10-year gap I'm like, mm, well, no. I love it. I, I would love to be able to use a spiral notebook, but left left handed people cannot use spiral notebooks. And if oh, you know, of yeah, course. No. Yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, I rely on my spiral notebooks. For me, it's a legal pad. I like legal pads, though. Yeah. I will try to use those. I've been using those more often lately. Fair but play, yeah. fair play. Excellent. Yep. So two minutes, 14 seconds. Oh, we got time. We, we got, got time. time. 49, 49. We've been 49. hanging out kind of in the middle. 49. Favorite class. And Favorite why. class. Um, ooh, okay. Uh, taking from if I was going to go. So if I was gonna go like if we were gonna look at like box standard vanilla 5e, um, yep. my favorite class would have to be I like wizard I like their wizard. I I lean towards Pathfinder Sorcerer when I played Pathfinder because Wizard yep. at the time was very much like if you want fireball how many fireballs are you taking kind of thing and so that was very annoying to like switch out all the time um so i lean towards sorcerer more so for ease of use but i love a magic caster um and in my game so like i said but i liked how 5e kind of tweaked how many spells you know as a wizard but yeah. you can still like use them as often as you want yeah, yeah. uh spell point but outside of spell points but 
uh, old school essentials slash more OSR slash early or other editions. I love DCC's Warrior. I steal that for everything. <laughs> That that make that just make that or daring That's, deed mechanic or whatever however yeah, they call yeah, it yeah. where you just you said you just you can do something you do basically just pull something off that you'd see on a Conan movie. Um or you read in a Conan novel. Like that is like a perfect to me that's a perfect mechanic. So we've got forty seconds left. Let's get Let's one go. more in. 28, 28. 28, 28. I'm gonna say the first thing that comes to mind, and hopefully it's not inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so Overweight 28, uh, relate to that. So, who was your first crush? Uh, Sarah. Sweet, sweet Sarah. Uh, I was about probably five or... S I was in kindergarten, so I was yeah. probably uh, younger than five at the time. And I remember we had this, like... our My school had this, like, lunch thing where we were going to... Like, a picnic thing, indoor, indoor picnic thing. And uh, they would pair us... The teachers would pair us up with, you know, a, usually with a best friend or something. But uh, they, uh, my teacher put me and Sarah together. And it was because that was they, everybody, like everybody in kindergarten knew, like, Sarah was my girl, man. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, I did not, we're, Sarah and I are no longer together. What? Um, <laughs> we had some, we had some differences. Um, mainly the way she liked to cut her peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, she liked to cut it long ways, whereas I'm more of a diagonal kind of guy. So that was kind of the. Yeah, that's not going to last. That was the end of that relationship. So I'm, I'm, I walked away. Or luckily, I walked away early and unscathed. So be careful out there, boys. The dating world yeah. is, uh, it's full of booby traps. Your heart had time to mend. It's fine. <laughs> You're in a better place. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's all the questions. Deficient. Yes. All right. What an amazing that was, chat. That yeah, was I love great. That. I love. I said I love your format. I don't know if I, I said it earlier. I'll say it again. <laughs> Dex Save Dan, you're oozing with personality. I love what you're doing on the channel. If you're a fan of me, viewer, you're a fan of Dex Save Dan. So go like, comment, and subscribe to his stuff, man, because he is kicking butt. I'll say the same to my viewers. Anyone who doesn't follow him already, Deficient Master, like, subscribe. All of that stuff. Heck but yeah. yeah, anything else that you'd like to say before we wrap up? <sighs> no, all right. Now we're still like, I'm still kind of growing. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. Um, just kind of doing the YouTube thing, kind of learning kind of what my style is. I, I like to experiment. Obviously, if you follow my channel yeah. at all, you know, I like to do some really weird stuff just to like, see what happens. I want to make this fun. This, you know, D and D and tabletop RPGs should be fun. Also, this should be a little loosey goosey. So Absolutely. if you don't like, if you don't like what I say in my opinions, you know, just know that I'm kind of cranking it up to 11. And uh, at the end of the day, your fun is valid. You play however you want. And I think on that note, we'll wrap it up. Deficient, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks, Have a Dan. lovely day. Catch All you right, later. Take, take care, boss.